in this video, we are going to talk about the uniqueness of Earth and the properties of Earth that makes it habitable. These are the specific learning outcomes. Ah, oh, and it's not gonna get better. I already know. Now this slide shows three of the four terrestrial planets in our solar system. Venus, Earth, Mars, and the other one is Mercury. So what are terrestrial planets? Terrestrial planets are Earth-like planets made up of rocks or metals with a hard surface. That's why they are also called as rocky planets. So terrestrial planets also have a molten heavy core, few moons, and topological features such as valleys, volcanoes, and craters. Venus is considered to be the Earth's twin planet because it has a very similar size and mass with the Earth. Mars, on the other hand, is about half the Earth's size. Now, I'm going to show you a table comparing these planets. So as you can see, Earth is the heaviest with 5.97 times 10 raised to the 24th power kilograms. Now, in terms of diameter, which is the length of the line through the center that touches two points on the edge of the circle, Earth has the greatest diameter. Next, we have density. Density is the mass per unit volume and is a measure of how compact the mass in a substance or object is. Okay, Earth has the greatest density. Next, we also have gravity. Gravity is a force by which a planet draws objects towards its center. Earth has the greatest gravity with 9.8. Next, we have escape velocity, which is related to gravity. Escape velocity is the minimum speed an object needs to escape a planet's pull of gravity. We also have the surface pressure. So what is the surface pressure? Surface pressure is the atmospheric pressure at a location on the surface of the planet. So this is proportional to the mass of air above the location. Here we have major greenhouse gas. So greenhouse gases are gases that trap heat in the atmosphere. So as you can see, the major greenhouse gas on these planets are carbon dioxide gases. So carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere through burning of fossil fuels, solid waste, trees and other biological matters, and also as a result of certain chemical reactions. Now, greenhouse gas will lead us to the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect is the natural warming of the earth because of too much greenhouse gases. So as you can see here, the average temperature on earth is 15 degrees. Without greenhouse gas, it will be negative 18 degrees Celsius which is not conducive for survival. So people will not survive in this temperature. But because of the warming effect of greenhouse gases, we are able to live on Earth. So are greenhouse gases undesirable? No! Because without it, Earth will not be habitable. But what we want to avoid is the runaway greenhouse gas effect which what happened in Venus. So a runaway gas effect occurs when a planet's atmosphere contains too much greenhouse gas to block thermal radiation from leaving the planet. So this prevents the planet from cooling and from having liquid water on its surface. Now actually, measurements by NASA's Pioneer mission to Venus in the 1980s first suggested that Venus originally may have had an ocean. However, Venus is closer to the sun than the Earth, so it receives more sunlight. Now, as a result, the planet's early ocean evaporated. So water vapor molecules were broken apart by UV radiation, and then the hydrogen escaped to space. So with no water left on the surface, carbon dioxide built up in the atmosphere, leading to a so-called runaway greenhouse effect that created the hellish condition on Venus. Whoa! Oh, that just gave me chills! The next set of properties are the following. So here is the orbital period and velocity. Orbital period and velocity are related to planets' distance from the sun. So among the three, 
Venus is the nearest and Mars is the farthest. We also have the length of day, which is a function of rotational speed. We also have the global magnetic field. So the Earth's magnetic field is believed to be the consequence of the presence of a solid metallic inner core and the liquid metallic outer core, which we will discuss in the next videos. No, thank you. No, thank you. Sorry. Now, let's discuss the factors that make planets habitable. So we have four. First is the temperature, which influences how quickly atoms and molecules move. We also have atmosphere. Atmosphere traps heat, shields the surface from harmful radiation, and provides chemicals needed for life, such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So planets should have sufficient size to hold a significant atmosphere. So the composition of the atmosphere, specifically the amount of greenhouse gases, influences the planet's surface temperature. Next, we have energy, which organisms need to use light or chemical energy to run their life processes. And lastly, we have the nutrients, which are used to build and maintain an organism's body. Now let's start with temperature. So not enough of the temperature or the low temperatures cause chemicals to react slowly, which interferes with the reactions necessary for life. It can also cause freezing of water, making liquid water unavailable. So water in the liquid form turns out to be one of the most important prerequisites for life as we know it. So life seems to be limited to a temperature range of negative 15 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. So in this range, liquid water can still exist under certain conditions. Okay, so what happens in the solar system? So in the surface, only the Earth's surface is in this temperature range. In the subsurface, the interior of the solid planets and moons may be in this temperature range. Now what happens if we have too much of the factor? At about 125 degrees Celsius, protein and carbohydrate molecules and the genetic material DNA and RNA start to break apart. Also high temperatures cause the quick evaporation of water. Let's go to atmosphere. So small planets and moons have sufficient gravity to hold an atmosphere. So here, the gas molecules escape to space, leaving the planet or moon without an insulating blanket or a protective shield. Remember, atmosphere protects the planet from harmful radiations caused by the sun. So how about the just right? Earth and Venus are the right size to hold a sufficient sized atmosphere. So Earth's atmosphere is about 100 miles thick, which keeps the surface warm and protects it from radiation and small to medium sized meteorites. Okay, so of all the solid planets and moons, only Earth, Venus, and Titan have significant atmosphere. Now how about if we have too much of the factor atmosphere? It will be like the Venus's atmosphere, which is 100 times thicker than Earth's. So it is made up of almost entirely greenhouse gases, making the surface too hot for life. Now let's go to energy. When there is too little sunlight or too few of the chemicals that provide energy to cells, such as iron and sulfur, organisms die. Now, if we have just the right amount of energy, cells can run the chemical reactions necessary for life. Okay, So the inner planets get too much sunlight for life. The outer planets get too little. In the subsurface, most solid planets and moons have energy-rich chemicals. So the amount of solar radiation that the planet receives is primarily a function of the distance from the sun. Again, sunlight is essential for photosynthesis, but some organisms are able to extract energy from other sources. They are called the chemosynthetic organisms. Now what happens 
if we have too much of energy. Too much energy is not really a problem. However, light energy becomes a problem if it makes a planet too hot or if there are too many harmful rays such as UV. So too many energy-rich chemicals is not really a problem. And lastly, let's go to nutrients. Okay, without chemicals to make proteins and carbohydrates, organisms cannot grow. So planets without systems to deliver nutrients to its organisms, such as water cycle or volcanic activity, cannot support life. Also, when nutrients are spread so thin that they are hard to obtain, such as on a gas planet, life cannot exist. Okay, so let's go to the just right. Let me calm down. Remember that all solid planets and moons have the same general chemical makeup. So nutrients are present. So those with a water cycle or volcanic activity can transport and replenish the chemicals required by living organisms. So Earth has a water cycle, an atmosphere, and volcanoes to circulate nutrients. Venus, Titan, Io, and Mars have nutrients and ways to circulate them to organisms as well. So basically, any planet or moon with subsurface water or molten rock can circulate and replenish nutrients for organisms. Here, too much nutrients is not really a problem. However, too active circulation system interferes with an organism's ability to get enough nutrients, okay? Such as the constant volcanism on Jupiter's moon or the churning atmospheres of the gas planets. Just remember, a system that will be able to constantly supply nutrients to organisms is important to sustain life. On Earth, nutrients are cycled through the hydrologic cycle and plate tectonics or volcanism.